Today Nvidia is launching their GeForce RTX 3060 Ti graphics cards. So they're taking another step down from the 3070 in terms of price and they're targeting that $400 or 400 euro price point. Now Nvidia claims that the 3060 Ti will perform about the same or slightly better than the RTX 2080 Super, which also makes it the first 60 card that actually makes sense to buy for Quad HD gaming. They also decided to change a couple of things when it comes to NDA this time around, so all the reviews will go live one day before these cards go on sale, which means that you have a little bit more time to make sure you're making the right choice before trying to order one tomorrow. And we can also talk about all the partner cards right away, which I will gladly do. Unfortunately, I was only able to get this gaming OC card from Gigabyte, so that kinda does raise some questions about availability tomorrow, but I'll talk about that later. Let's first see how well these cards perform and how do they compare to each other. Let's begin. This video is brought to you by Seasonic and their Prime Series power supplies. These top quality power supplies are very efficient, they're whisper quiet, extremely reliable and my go-to choice for most of my test rigs and builds around here. And to make the deal even sweeter, Seasonic wraps it all up in a cozy 12 year long warranty. Check them out using the links in the description below. Nvidia's Founders Edition looks pretty similar to the RTX 3070, but with a lighter silver trim. It's a pretty small and compact card, but it is exceptionally well built. It's made completely out of metal with that one thick silver frame going through and making that S shape. It has a pretty and a sleek back plate with an opening for some air to go through as well. You will need a single 8 pin power connector on your power supply for this one, uh, which then connects to the 12 pin adapter that Nvidia supplies. Again, I really think it goes a bit awkwardly into the middle of the card and it kind of takes away from that elegant look that they're going for. Alternatively, if you have a Seasonic power supply like I do, you can ask for one of these dedicated cables that look a bit nicer in the end. When it comes to connections, you get three DisplayPort 1.4 connections and one HDMI 2.1 connection. Now, Gigabyte's Gaming OC is also very similar to their 3070 card. Uh, they went with this big three fan design again. Uh, the shroud is plastic, but it feels pretty decent and pretty sturdy. I do like that neutral color scheme as well because it makes it very easy to match with most other components out there. And again, it comes with a nice metal back plate as well, which gives this card a bit of a nicer overall look. While Nvidia didn't add any features to their reference card, Gigabyte does add a bio switch, which is always a good thing in my opinion. Now, when it comes to connections, you get two DisplayPort 1.4 connections and two HDMI 2.1 connections. So if you need an extra HDMI port, this is a card to consider. But let's jump straight to performance. And per usual, I use the 3060 Ti Founders Edition for the comparisons between different chips. And then we're going to compare the FE to this Gigabyte Gaming OC card. So let's start with 1080p gaming. The RTX 3060 Ti is constantly performing around the same level of the RTX 2080 Super. It's sometimes a bit slower, sometimes a bit faster, but they are pretty close in majority of games I tested. That also makes it consistently and considerably faster than the RTX 2060 Super, which is pretty much the predecessor of this card. And keep in mind, the 2060 Super was a good 1080p card, but this 3060 Ti is just better, and it's mostly performing around 30% better actually than its predecessor. It is consistently faster than the RX 5700 XT as well. Sometimes by a few percent, sometimes by around 30%, so I would say it's a pretty convincing win too. The only exception here is Assassin's Creed Valhalla, which for some reason just seems to do so much better on AMD cards. But 1440p resolution is where it gets interesting in my opinion. So while you could play some games on Quad HD with the 2060 Super, it did lack a bit of power, while this 3060 Ti does really well on this resolution, staying above 60 FPS average in every game I've tested. I do think that 3070 is worth the extra investment if you can afford it, but if it's you know just too expensive for you, this 3060 Ti is a really good alternative. Especially if you look at the DLSS 2.0 titles like Control, for example, where you can actually get really good frame rates 
while if you use a 5700 XT, you will really have to drop the graphics settings for this game. Now, of course, this is not a 4K gaming card, or at least not for consistent AAA gaming, but some games will actually play completely fine. And even if you look at some upcoming titles, like my beloved Cyberpunk, for example, they suggest that the 3060 Ti will be able to play the game at 4K resolution ultra settings without ray tracing, and of course, thanks to DLSS, but still, that's great. Well, if you want to go the AMD route, you'll need to get a much more expensive RX 6800 XT to do the same. But while DLSS is really great when it's supported, there will be plenty more games that just won't run well on 4K resolution with this card. So if you're serious about 4K gaming, you should try to spend a tiny bit more and buy a better card than this one. Now, when it comes to esports titles, you don't really need an expensive card to play these games but there is still a significant difference between these mid-range cards in higher FPS scenarios at 1080p resolution. The averages are fine, but the 1% lows are considerably better on a 3060 Ti, and if you're gaming on a fast monitor, you will definitely notice that difference. Again, you don't really need a $400 GPU for 1080p gaming, but if you can afford it, it is definitely worth it over the other alternatives. One of the things NVIDIA is really focusing on, yet again, is ray tracing, and I have to say they do have a point there. I mean, in most games that do support it, it looks really nice, and then combined with the DLSS, the performance penalty is not so high, and you will actually get that similar level of experience as you would in other games. So you would get high frame rates on 1080p resolution, and you would get comfortable frame rates on 1440p resolution. But like I said before, we're not there yet when it comes to ray tracing. I mean, there are only a few dozen games that actually support it, and in most of those titles, it's just limited to a couple of effects, that's it. So I think it's a nice bonus feature to have when everything else is equal, but I don't think that we should just forget about AMD and buy NVIDIA just because it does ray tracing better at the moment. Unless you are streaming, because NVIDIA's NVENC encoder is just superior. With 2000 and 3000 series cards, it is pretty easy to just start streaming right away, even if you don't have a really powerful processor. Now, since AMD still doesn't have a proper answer to that just yet, Nvidia kind of wins by default at any price point if you want to stream. Or if you want to use Adobe Premiere for that matter, as the NVENC encoder really makes a big difference there as well. And if you are a streamer, they also added a couple of extra features that might interest you, like NVIDIA Broadcast, for example, so check that out. But let's see how these two 3060 Ti's compare to each other. In a GPU stress test, both cards actually showed pretty similar clock speeds, just shy of 2 GHz, but in 3D Mark and a couple of games, the Gigabyte does take a small lead here between 1 and 4%. Now, this is most likely because of the slightly higher power target this card has. So in a game, this complete system with the Gigabyte card uses around 365 watts, and that's with a power-hungry Intel Core i9. So if you're buying a new power supply, a good quality 550-watt one should be fine for most systems, or you should consider a 650 one if you want to play it safer or if you want to overclock a bit. What is really nice is that both of these cards actually remain super quiet. They turn off their fans completely in idle and under load they're doing around 35 decibels at 50 centimeters distance, which I would say is barely any noise at all. The Gigabyte card does stay a lot cooler though, so the Founders Edition temperatures are completely fine, um, especially if you're considering a smaller case that won't fit this big Gigabyte card, but obviously a bigger heatsink at three fans will do better if you have space for it. Now, unfortunately, I cannot really show you the results of the quiet BIOS, as this early Gigabyte sample came actually with two identical BIOS versions installed, but I'm sure that the retail models will have this setting right, and I would expect an even quieter card with temps around the 60 degree mark in the silent mode. When it comes to pricing, um, I didn't really get exact prices from Gigabyte just yet, so I'm also eagerly waiting to see what the situation will be like tomorrow, but I kind of do expect this Gigabyte card to be a bit more expensive than the reference card, which should be sold at the MSRP, which is $399 in the US or about 400 euros here in the EU. 
And that's it for today. Now, obviously, it's a pretty easy win for NVIDIA at this $400 price point because it's the cheapest card in this new generation of GPUs and then with 2080 super levels of performance. So if the 3070 was just a bit too expensive for you, you can just go ahead and look into this card instead. Now, the real challenge will be when NVIDIA releases a 3060 non-TI at a lower price point or when an AMD releases a 6700 or something along those lines, but I'm guessing they will need some time to find production capacity for such cards, and I would say until AMD releases a cheaper option, I don't think Nvidia will be in a hurry with a non-TI. So the only thing left to do is to wait until tomorrow and see how the availability of these cards will be. Nvidia said that they will be shipping out more of these, but then looking at the 3070 situation right now and the fact that I could only get my hands on two cards instead of the usual four or more, I'm not really holding my breath here. I expect that, you know, whatever cards they have in stock will probably sell out pretty quickly and then probably for higher prices than the MSRP. So either way, you should be, you know, mentally prepared for a poor stock situation tomorrow. And if they somehow manage to pull it off, we can just pretend I didn't say anything. But Anyhow, thank you so much for watching today. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and do subscribe to my channel for more content like this one. And if you want to support tech testers even more so we can make more of these videos and we can make them even better, do consider becoming a Patreon member. I will leave a link in the description down below. Bye guys and see you in the next one.